Welcome to another Blender tutorial. In this one, uh, we're still using version 2.69, even though uh, Blender is up to 2.74 at the moment, I think it is, but the process is more or less the same for what we're going to be doing now. What we're going to be doing is this shot here, and I thought I'd show you my w a workflow of how I managed to get this shot as a composite for those who are interested. In this shot, I'm going to need a beach, and I'm a thousand kilometers from the beach, but I did go there quite a few years ago when I had some standard footage, but standard footage is this size, and if I blow it up, it's going to look really blurry, so I'm going to make a pot composite. I have uh, gone through all of my footage here of all of the uh, my time at the beach, down in Cartagena it was, and then I've chosen some footage here, and I'm going to then compose... I've taken about 13 snapshots to make some sand here. I'm going to use that shot here. There's another shot there. So I've made a, a background that is still. That's a piece of footage that is going to be moving. The bird's going to be moving. Those sea, bits of sea is going to be moving. And that, I am not sure whether I'm going to include that or not. And of course, I'm then going to be putting me uh, having a vacation on the beach. So there is my planning of my shot. I'm going to use those pieces. I've looked through my footage, and one of the shots that I'm going to need is a piece of sea. Um, I'm not going to need my daughters or my children, but I will need the sea. So I render that off, and then uh, into a video to be taken into Blender. And here I have brought it into Blender. I've imported it into the movie clip editor, and previously I then brought that piece in and tracked it to stabilize it. I've tracked this piece of rock here, and it will make the tracking so that it will now stabilize the shot using the reconstruction mask reconstruction over here in the 2D stabilization, stable and stabilize, putting that track point in. Then I went to I then rendered that off into an image sequence, and then I now have my stable footage, more or less. Now I'm going to get rid of my children. Not literally, but just in this picture. So I'm tracking my daughter Natalie's head, and then I'm making a mask that goes around her, blurring out the edges, or feathering them out, and then parenting that mask to the tracking point so that it will now animate and move with her. I've also animated it so that it can move with the C as well to have the minimum of patching. Then in my node editor I have set things up to have that that same movie clip. I've fed it into a alpha over mixer and the animated mask here fed into the fact button and then I've taken the same movie clip and if I take that out here, you can see there is the patch that it's going to put on. Now I want to patch it with a piece of C. Take this C and move it over to patch that place there. So I connect it in and move it across with the uh, transform node. And as you can see now, she has disappeared. Then I will render that off and will possibly just uh, repeat the process to get rid of these other two children. Not literally once again. And I should have a clean piece of C to then add to my composition. And there I have it. I have masked and animated that mask so that it follows them. And then over in the node editor, I have added in another line of taking the result of the last one, getting rid of my other daughter, uh, adding it into another from the movie clip through the transform to shift the piece of C over and there we have the result. Now I can render it off. So in similar fashion I'm going to need the piece of C for the distance and I've, ta I've got to get rid of these fishermen here. So I've tracked them and uh, got rid of them also. Then I'm going to need to uh, multiply that and if I go to the node editor I have taken here the one clip and displaced it and also put a blurry edge around, a masked an edge around it so that you haven't got your harsh edges, and repeated that three or four times to get a strip across there. Then go render that off. 
And similarly, I've taken that piece of C, masked it off to put some feathering on the edges and gone to the node editor and repeated it several times so that we're going to get a decent expanse of water. Coordinated, hopefully, and render that one off. Now in the planning stage, you'll see here our shot is going to be about 20 seconds long and I've got my bits of C and stuff, but unfortunately some of those clips are not 20 seconds long, so I'm going to have to repeat them, like in the case of this one here, three times through. Sometimes a quiet little dissolve through them will work, and sometimes it won't. In the case of the foreground piece of C here, for example, we can get to the situation where the wave comes in and it looks looking good, and all of a sudden it chops back to the static piece of C. Now, if I do a dissolve through, that helps to uh, quiet the, uh, uh, the jump, but it's still very jumpy and you don't have waves that suddenly disappear just like that. So, I took the wave here, the, the last frame of that wave, and then animated it sort of down so that it shrinks. Now, hopefully, since it's on the edge of the clip and on the edge of the beach hopefully it will blend in and in order to get that uh, animation bit I just took one the last frame of that and deleted all the background basically saved that off as a PNG now in Blender I just animated that by uh, lining it up on the piece of footage that it's going to be in the final one there scaling it with a scale node and animating that going to the first part there and then at the first frame and then on the last end of the frame, for example, I'm going to do a 22 second uh, fade over there. I used to scale it on the Y and Z and also transformed it to move it to make sure it coordinates so that as it goes through, it will at least shrink down out of the way. Then disconnecting the background there, I rendered off a 22 frame image sequence of the waves to then put on top of the transition back in Premiere. So in Premiere, I can, or in your video application, uh, editing application, I have put four pieces of that C to make up my 20 seconds, put a dissolve across it to make that a little bit softer, and then put that wave transition fading in and fading out also of the animation so that hopefully it will smooth that transition and hopefully as it's on the edge of the beach and behind the wizard then hopefully it won't be too noticeable let's go try and see it so we had the uh, uh, initial planning stages then made the beach out of various different uh, shots or takes to make the sand planned it more or less i've got this one stabilized looped and working okay this piece of uh, C also working okay. Then we have the loop, uh, the piece of C. There's a few lines here that need to be sort of blurred out a little bit, I think. But it's working, and it only goes as far as there, so I'll have to loop it to fix uh, so that it'll continue the full 20 seconds. But the rest of it's working okay. And then we're up to now this foreground piece of C that we've just done rolling in and crashing waves and fades okay and by the time it gets to its second cycle through the uh, wizard will have sat up and then it won't become a problem to see it repeating over and over but it will work okay and we'll fill in that background so now i want to put a, a bird into the picture off on the left and i want to have it moving because he does turn his head and he's a little bit animated better than just a still picture uh, so now i'm going to have to rotoscope him basically by putting a mask around him make sure that the feathering more or less is a similar sort of width as the edges of the bird so that he doesn't come out too sharp on his edges when you uh, finally put him in so he's not going to be looking too cut out then I'm going to animate it make sure that it follows him and then go into the node editor and set that up so that I have my movie clip with the that there and the mask coming through and uh, exporting it as an image sequence 
Now it's only 193 frames long and I need 650 frames, so I'm going to have to loop it. So let's go to Premiere, and I've just looped it uh, four times. But the good thing with this is that as he looks there, he can, uh, after lifting his head, looking up, he can lift his head and put it back down again. And I can put it into reverse speed so that it takes up on the last frame of that one and just repeats it backwards and then he looks for a while then he can go forward motion again and then lift his head up and repeat that until i've got my 650 and make it a little bit faster also just to compress it down and provide a bit of variation between those pauses so let's render those off and i may even put a uh, a green background in there file a new color mat and I'll put it as a green color right we've got red zero green full blue there that's my perfect green which will key out very nicely put that in the bottom and then render off that piece of video now having recorded that off we're going to go back into our node system and find where we had that egret here, import it in the movie clip editor, clip open, import it, here it is, nicely green, and then to the node editor, go find it, and it should all turn green, but that's no problem, we're going to add a matte keying node, and put it into the line there before it feeds in, and get the key color with a dropper, is fine and voila there we have a our little bird and he will be moving as well so he will be animated now we're ready to start keying i think keying our main figure onto there and here's just a provisional and that's more or less what the shot's going to look like I may put that boat going through there, maybe. I'll think about that one. Now, we're going to have a problem with him because there's too much green. Green grass, green background, everything goes green. So we're going to do a, a lot of rotoscoping and masking as well as keying. So I thought I would try, uh, just have a go at putting that boat in there. Yeah, I've got the piece of footage that I've stabilized before with the egret. And the boat goes across the screen and we just cut them out eventually and they get to the end of the screen and we just repeat the entry again and coordinate it so that they go across now at one point it doesn't quite get on screen and off screen at the same time so i had to take a freeze frame and then of the back guy there and let him go animating across with the boat until it does pick up the shot again and then just repeat the thing through again now I will isolate them, cut them out, or key them out. I expect there's enough blue there, I think, uh, to be able to key them out. And we'll just patch over the bird's head, I think. So let's render that off. We brought this into, into Blender. I have uh, tracked the point of the boat, and then with a mask around it, just to get rid of a whole bunch of this junk and to clean up the background and turn it green so that I can key it better on later on in the node editor i just brought the clip in uh, keyed on that blue color as you can see and uh, there and that has disappeared enough of that blue as i was saying it's still a little bit speckly but that's okay so i've used the mask and with an alpha over and put a green background in perfect green no red no blue and then i'm going to export that just bring that down turn it into the uv image editor render it just to make sure that we've got the right everything okay and then that's good enough for the first pass and the next one will clean up all that junk with a bit of rotoscoping and the bird's head so let's render that off as an image sequence in order to get rid of all that speckly stuff that didn't get keyed out we're going to do some rotoscoping. I've brought it into the 
the movie clip editor through the clip open and go search for that sequence that we just rendered and here it is then in the tracking mode here I have um, tracked the point of the boat and it will track along nicely with it and then I made a mask which I am then going to parent to it that is control uh, while the tracking point is uh, selected and white looking uh, control P will parent it uh, select all of those points of course that's the A key and that will select them all and then control P will parent it to that tracking point so it will now move along with the boat and then after that all I have to do is make minor adjustments with this button on to automatically insert keyframes so that it will generate up here in the dope sheet here will then show me all my keyframes and they're just slight adjustments for any movement that might need fixing there then into the node editor it's a quite a simple setup just the movie the mask that I have just animated an alpha over with the um, convert pre-multiply button on and also selected green by just putting red to zero blue to zero and I've got perfect green as a background and that into the composite and the viewer allows me to see it in this window as well I've opened up a um, UV image editor here just render that to make sure it's all working fine okay and now it's all cleaned up I'll probably have to add some stuff back in like the wake of the boat and patch a few little holes in there and also that piece with the head but let's render this off now to clean up that bird head that was taking a chunk out of the hull and also those uh, holes that appear in the body of that man I have tracked the point of the bow of the the boat as you can see it's a track point then the man's body I have parented to that track point and then animated it uh, to just fine tune it then on the bird mask here I did not parent it to here because the bird is static basically it's not traveling with the boat and so I just animated it with the movement of the birds head so that I can now use those to patch now to do the patching I went to my node editor and took my movie clip here and put it into an alpha over and first off I took a frame of the boat hull when it didn't have uh, a bird head on it then I adjusted it with a transform so that it was positioned straight over the initial point which was uh, frame 181 in this case then I used the track that was from the boat uh, head to then make it track along relative to that starting frame so that hull of the boat the freeze frame will now move with the hull of the boat and I can now use it as a patch so that I use the mask from the bird head to then patch that hull which is moving which patches the hull then I took the movie clip original with the movie clip and the mask from the man and pasted it over with an alpha over node so that I got my body patched and the hull patched then we go and render that off and in this case I'm just rendering it back to the same sequence now here is the boat all restored with the birds head gone patched up and everything and then I decided I would put the wake of the boat because it looks a little bit too tranquil there so I tracked and and animated that water wake it should appear shortly yes there it is now it's a little bit light if we were to just plug that straight into the system straight like that you will see that it is going to be too light and also it's got rather dark edges on it it does it stands out like a sore thumb so I have added a color uh, color correction node and put that into the line Oops. and then I have uh, put the gain down just to darken it up but I've still got these edges around it 
it's about the same color as the water. So what I did then was took the alpha channel out of the movie clip node and put it into a dilate and erode node, which is in the add uh, filters into the dilate and erode node. And then when I plug that in, it takes the alpha channel and it we will use it as a mask. And then I've reduced it by four pixels, which then shrinks that border down. Let's try three, shall we? Yes, three is fine. And so now we have that looking decent enough trailing behind the boat. Right. Now, one thing I want is that I want the boat to come in later. It comes in right at the beginning of the shot. And by the end of the shot, or even three quarters of the way through the shot, they're right across and going up the beach. You see? Which I don't want them up on the beach. I want them more or less behind the wizard by the time it finished. So I want to add an extra 250 frames or so on the beginning of the shot. So, now opening up the uh, sequence in the movie clip editor, normally it will just start and play as many frames as it is, but over here in the properties panel on the left by clicking the plus there or just drag and dragging it open, down at the bottom there is footage, informa footage settings. Here, in this one here, it says start frame. I can tell it to do start playing on frame 250 of the video. So that you'll have blank, nothing, until you get to the 250, and it will start playing. Frame offset is if you want to trim that. For example, you want to start on the 10th frame of the video as well, but we'll leave it at zero, because we want it to start not offset, but starting on 250. The same with the, uh, the wake. I think we'll do the same thing and give it an extra 250 frames so that it will follow behind OK. Then we can render those off, but uh, unfortunately if you render that one just straight here, where it is, uh, because we're using um, an alpha over mix or just straight there, you're going to get blank before you suddenly get the 250 frames and all of a sudden you'll have your green background for keying and everything and if you go back further than that it suddenly disappears because you've got frames but blank frames now I want to key the whole thing in green so basically I take the movie clip editor feed it into a mixer or an alpha over node and make the bottom color uh, pure green by clicking on the image button down the red down the blue and you've got perfect green then I can render that sequence off with the 250 frames of green on the front so that I can key that out. So render that sequence. Similarly, I'll do the same thing for the pieces C. I've decided in the end I will do them independently so I can control them independently in the node editor. So I'll render that off. Now I've done a bit of a clean up here and so I've got all of that big block of nodes there I rendered down into one basic image sequence with the background C and everything ready to put everything else on top and that got rid of about five or six gigs of sequences so that helped out and there it is there now we're ready to put um, the extras on the boat the wake the egret and the wizard now I took the the boat basically here all fixed up and everything that sequence and then used a key node to key out the, on the green but then when I'm at the 250 frames when the, they come in and in their boat they start their frame on screen the 249 they're off screen then in 250 they're on screen so I put in a transform node into the line to move them off screen but unfortunately, that made a uh, shifted the whole alpha channel across, and when it mixes together, it leaves this blank here. So I had to go back to the movie clip editor and make a mask that covers that. So I'm going to crop that off with the mask by going to the node editor 
and putting in a mask, selecting that one that I have there and plugging it into the factor and it will then cut that off and give me back my background. So then that means uh, when I go to put the wake in, as in the water, I'm going to have to do the same thing. If I'm along here, I'm going to key out the green with a keying node, and then I'm going to move by taking this transform and shift D to duplicate it. And I'm not going to use that, so I'll just delete it. And do that for this one, and then I put it through the color correction node to darken the wake down, as I showed you before, and also the dilate node, I've got to shift that alpha channel also the same amount, so there's three copies of the same movement of shifting that all back. Feed that all into one, then the same problem happens, it will chop that off, so I've used the same cropping mask to give that back to me, and now we have the boat moving fine and also ending up on the screen more or less when and where I want them. Then we can add the egret into things on top of that. So the water goes behind the egret. There it is there. And now I'm ready to start working on the key. I could just render that whole sequence that piece together off into an image sequence if I'm short on space, but I'm not, so I'll just leave it like that for the moment and work on that one. So without going into too much detail, I have basically taken my clip here and I've put a no, uh, keying node in there and keyed out. Then I have replaced, mixed in a green background over here, and then I've gone back several passes just patching up, getting rid of all that junk in the background, and also patching holes in the figure here and to, until I have a fairly clean sequence with a clean background to then key out onto the main project. Here we have our finished sequence of uh, cleaning up ready for the keying. I have a keying node here and then I have color balanced it a little bit or um, changed it a bit in the coloring just to make it a little bit more the same color. And then I have also adjusted the hue and saturation because it was a little oversaturated in the original compared to this background here. And since it's a nice beach type day, we'll have it slightly undersaturated. Mix it all in together from the background that's all come through the pipeline. And we get basically that. Now on top of that, I've decided to just give it a little subtle um, wrap light by inverting the alpha mat, then blurring it then subtracting the blur from the other non-blurred so that we get the alpha channel, then set the alpha uh, with the background so that it now makes this little blurry outline on top of the uh, the figure from the background, then putting it on that's without it, and if you look around the hat here, and then it puts just a slight little bit of light on there, and it helps to integrate him into the background a little bit by spilling the light from the background onto him. Now it's just a case of rendering that sequence off and we are basically done. Little birdie flew in with a message.